This is how TikTok will ruin your relationship if you allow it. I know the first thing you're going to say is, well, don't you make TikToks about relationships? And yeah, I do. I actually have a really popular TikTok page where I only talk about relationships. So how is that not contradictory that I'm telling you that TikToks will ruin your relationship, but relationship, but I make TikToks about relationships? Well, let me explain to you. The first thing is that even on my page, I tell people constantly, there is no one quick fix to have a perfect relationship. And I really do truly believe that. There is no one sentence, one action you can take that will ma magically make all your relationships amazing for the rest of your life. It just doesn't work like that. But what I do do, do do, what I do do on my page is I teach people many different ways in which they can get the answers that they want. I like to do what I call teaching people how to fish, right? And that's what I believe we should all be doing is teaching each other how to fish because there's no way I could possibly be in your life, be in your relationship, know exactly all the different circumstances and contexts which your relationship falls under, exactly what you've been through with your significant other to exactly apply the perfect technique in your relationship at the exact right time that will give you the desired result and answer that you perfectly need in the exact right way that you need. It just doesn't work like that. That's not how life works. But what I can do for you is I can teach you how to position yourself in a place, in a way that you can be most successful and success is understanding your partner so you can solve your problems, work on the relationship and build a healthy, sustainable relationship or so that you can identify the people in your life or the relationships you have that are with someone who isn't truly invested in you the same way you're invested in them or who doesn't truly have the right intention, meaning wanting to be in a serious long term relationship. Right. And I always I always state that in um, maybe not directly in my videos, but whenever I go on live, I always talk to um, my supporters and the people that listen to me that, hey, guys, there's not one quick fix for all your answers and your relationships. And I want you guys to take the things I say with a grain of salt. And I want you to really absorb the concepts that I'm trying to teach you, as opposed to just hoping that I'll say one thing that it's like, okay, you ask this one question and that'll solve all your problems. Okay. Which leads me to my next point, which is one thing that I've been seeing that's been getting really popular on TikTok about relationships and just these couple videos, right? Relationship TikTok is the orange peel theory. Now, this orange peel theory, I'll insert a video of it here so you guys can kind of see and understand the gist of it, is essentially where a woman will film herself, set up the camera, and she'll film herself, right, asking her boyfriend to peel an orange for her, right? And the whole idea of the TikTok is that when she asks him to peel an orange for her, his reaction will determine whether he's a good boyfriend, a good man, a good husband, or a bad boyfriend, a bad man, or a bad husband, whether she has a good relationship, a healthy one, or a unhealthy relationship. Because if your man, essentially this is the idea, if your man is willing to take the orange from you and peel it for you and give it back to you without any if, ands, or buts, then he's a good man. You have a healthy relationship. You get princess treatment. I, I think that's the idea. If he doesn't peel the orange for you or he makes it hard or make, uh, gives you a hard time about peeling the orange for you, then you don't have a good man. If he argues with you, then you don't have a good man. If he questions you, then you don't have a good man. You have an unhealthy relationship. You have a toxic relationship. You should leave that man. You should leave that relationship. And I'm pretty sure I've even seen the orange peel theory reversed as well, guys doing it with the girls. And so the thing becomes, yeah, I understand, you know, TikTok, things can be jokes. Yeah, I understand people play and have fun. And I don't have any issue with having fun. The only thing I say to that is I do understand that some people really internalize those ideas that like, oh, Rather than actually understanding my partner, 
getting to know them, understanding the issues that we have to work through, understanding the problems we have to solve in order to be in a healthy relationship, asking my partner questions about their past, I think I'll just ask them if they can peel an orange for me and that will tell me if I have a healthy or unhealthy relationship. That will determine if I have a good man or a bad man. That will determine if I have a good girlfriend or a bad girlfriend. And I just think that this, the orange peel theory is not the only type of relationship TikTok that has kind of taken over the platform and made people feel like, oh, this is the answer to all my relationship problems. It's not the first one and it won't be the last, but the example of it just goes to show how people want so badly to uh, dig their shovel in one particular concept to be the answer to all their problems that they want to go and try the orange peel theory for themselves and decide whether or not they have a good relationship based on a TikTok. Now, I understand TikTok can definitely help you learn stuff and gain knowledge and gather information. I'm not saying it's not a great plat platform for that. I just want to stress against the idea that one simple trick, one simple idea, one simple, you know, just thing you can do one time is going to change your entire life, right? And I want us to get away from this extremist idea where everything has to be one or the other. It either has to be black or white. Excuse me, I burp a lot. You guys know that if you spend a lot of time with me. I just want us to get away from the idea that life has to be black or white, where either I have to have a good relationship because my man will peel my orange for me without question, or I have a totally horrible relationship because my man won't peel an orange for me at all. I feel like it's super unfair to your partner, whether it's a girl or a guy. And I think it's super un unfair to you as well, because now what happens if your man doesn't peel your orange for you, what do you start thinking? Oh, he probably doesn't love me. Oh, I see. I see these other men on, on TikTok. They're peeling oranges for their woman without even questioning it. My man argues with me. My man tells me that I should peel the orange myself. My man questions why he has to peel the orange instead of me just peeling the orange. And just that fast, you now are in belief that you don't have a good relationship or your relationship isn't as good as the ones you see on TikTok because your man won't peel your orange for you. You have no idea what he's going through that day. You have no idea how he's feeling that day. You have no idea what he's been through. You have, you have no idea what's going through his mind when you randomly ask him to peel an orange. You, have, you don't even know if for you, that could be so outside of your patterns. He's, that, that's the reason he's questioning things. He's like, that's not like you to even ask me for an orange. First of all, you don't eat fruit. Then second of all, to ask me to peel it for you, you've always been someone that barely asked for help. Now you're asking me to peel an orange for you? I'm not saying you're a bad person for trying the TikTok or having fun with the TikTok, but I just want to caution you against, right? Caution all of us against using one particular idea to determine whether or not we have a good relationship. What should determine whether we have a good relationship is our connection with our partner, right? And I'll get to that in a second because I want to, I want to touch on my next point, which is on TikTok. There's a lot of contradictory information coming from multiple different sources. And I'm part of that. I don't want you guys to think that I think I'm some holier than thou. Oh, yeah, every other relationship TikToker or a person who talks about relationship doesn't know what they're talking about, but I know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't particularly think I'm any smarter, more capable, intelligent, or have any more knowledge than the next person. I'm a curious guy. So I like to ask questions and I like to analyze situations and why things are happening. But I don't think I'm any better than someone or more knowledgeable than someone in relationships. I've just been blessed with the ability to articulate myself and my thoughts and the thoughts of others. Maybe some things I say might be true and work perfectly. Maybe some things I say might be untrue and not work perfectly. That's how life goes. But my point being, is after a while of you absorbing all this information, you'll come to realize that just like with anything, you'll start to get some contradictory information after a while. You're going to hear this point 
about, oh, in your relationship, you should constantly over communicate. Ne- never, never have any moment where you're not brutally honest with each other and communicating all the time, every time, all day, every day. Then you're going to hear someone else uh, say, oh, well, too much communication can be really bad. If you have a bad thought or a bad feeling, you should shut your mouth. You don't want to be mean to your partner. Don't be too honest because too much honesty will make them resent you. You will hear all types of contradictory information. What you need to do as an active listener who's gathering information, you need to not allow yourself to be swayed by any of the extremes. And you need to understand that with all the advice you're going to get, just like when you get advice from people on friendships, relationships, on life, when you get advice from enough people, you're going to hear them say different contradictory things. It's the same thing. It's the same concept. If you get advice from me, it's going to be based on my life perspective, the things I've been through, the relationships I've had, the experiences I've had, right? I'm going to wrap that up, crystallize that, put it in a ball, and I'm going to give it to you to receive, but it's going to be all covered in my perspective, right? The same way the next TikToker is going to give you a bunch of information, facts, and things you can try and concept, but it's all going to be wrapped inside their own perspective of life. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the only way we can deliver inf- information as humans is by giving you our perspective, uh, giving it to you through our perspective. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I want you to understand is it that is that it's coming to you through our perspective. Right? And you have to be aware that that's going to change the way it's delivered. Right? I might think one thing And it might be true to me because it's worked for me in my relationships and in my experience. And another TikToker might think another thing because it's true to them and has worked for them in their experiences. But I want you to understand that you don't have to live life on one of the extremes. It doesn't always have to be black or white. It can be gray. And a lot of times when you listen to enough information, you'll figure out the statements that are true are usually somewhere in the middle. And they're more nuanced than just being black or white. So is life. Life is not black or white. Life is a whole lot of gray. And you spend your entire life maneuvering through and around and underneath and over the gray. I want you to understand you are dealing with gray. If you allow these videos, not just on TikTok, but on Instagram, even on YouTube, like the one you're watching right now, to make you believe that your relationship is black or white. It's either good or bad because of one simple thing. Oh, if he doesn't answer your question exactly like this, then your relationship's bad. No, I don't believe that. I believe that there's concepts in which you need to be aware of why people might say things or do things in a particular way. And you need to be aware of what that would likely represent, right? And when you are aware of what that represents, you should ask more questions in order to uh, confirm or deny that theory. But like I say, life is about gray and it's about figuring out the gray. Okay, this doesn't logically make sense. Let me ask more questions and figure out what the truth is. Okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense. The way he's treating me isn't in line with the way he says he uh, wants our relationship to be. Let me ask more questions and figure out why this is the way that it is. Let me ask more questions about him. Get him to talk about himself in his own life to figure out, is he even in a place where he should be dating? Right? These are the things that you need to be thinking about with nuance. Don't allow TikTok to control your relationship or tell you whether your relationship is good or bad. Allow TikTok to help you gather information, but understand with that information, it is always going to be skewed through the person who's delivering its perspective. Okay. Now, that brings me to my next point, which is that, and my last point that I want to crystallize everything in, which, and the most important point, which is that relationships are ever-evolving, okay? Ever-evolving. Your relationship is not static, right? Meaning it's, it's always in motion. It's always growing and changing. 
and because people are always growing and changing. And the number one thing you need to be aware of is how your relationship is growing and changing and developing and what stage it's at, where it's at, and if that's working for you. You need to be curious about your partner. You need to ask questions. Now everyone says, oh, what type of questions should I ask? And what type of answers should I get? And what, what if he does this? And what if at 12.30 at night he's asleep and then he wakes up and he eats fruit roll up and then he asks me if I wanna go to dinner the next day? Relax, okay? Like I say, life is not black or white. Life is gray. Don't be looking for a magical question that will solve all your problems. Don't be looking for a single magical answer that will tell you if you have a good relationship or a bad relationship, a good man or a bad man, a good woman or a bad woman. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. You need to be curious about your partner and do your best to understand your partner even in the process at the beginning, especially in the process at the beginning of learning and understanding your partner so you can better understand if their qualities and character traits are conducive or in line with the serious long-term relationship, assuming that's what you want. Maybe you just want friends with benefits or a one-night stand. Assuming you want a long-term sustainable relationship, your entire job should be learning and understanding your partner through a series of questions, active listening, just your perspective and going through um, experiences with them, analyzing their actions. All of that should be used to determine, learn, and understand who that person is, what they're about, and if that is someone that can work with you and the person that you are in a long-term, serious, sustainable relationship. 